Hi, welcome to another video in the Content Manager 10 overview series provided by Information First. In this video, we're going to look at one of the new and expanded features, the Explorer view that's available in both the desktop client and the web client. Now, this is a feature that was introduced in an earlier version, 9.4, I believe, uh, but they've continued to expand on it, increase its functionality, and as you'll see, connected it to the website or to the web client now with a completely redesigned web client. So the web client overview is another video. Remember, I'm doing this as a series, so you can jump around and watch any video you want, but the, the web client video will go into the web client in a lot more detail. This video is gonna focus specifically on the Explorer bar. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is work with the Explorer bar in, or the Explorer view in Content Manager. So let me open it on my desktop. Okay, so as you said, as you saw in the overview video, I have set the Explorer view to be my start page. I did that through the user options, selecting options here and start up and scrolling down and selecting the Explorer view. The second thing I did, which I do recommend just because I think they kind of compete, is I disabled the shortcut bar by going to the view tab, deselecting the shortcut view. So that removed that shortcut panel. It gives you a little more real estate on the interface. The other reason why I do did that was I believe the the Explorer view kind of replaces the shortcut. It offers everything the shortcut bar offered and a little bit more. Specifically, the favorites view of the Explorer matches the favorites bar of the shortcut bar. The tray view uh, matches the tray view of the shortcut bar. And there's the recent containers and recent documents. Now, what they have done is they've called out and given you classification, user labels, and a bunch of stuff. So. I have the Explorer bar configured a certain way right now, and I'll show you how you can make those changes. <clears throat> Remember, the favorites view is just anything you've deemed as a favorite, whether it be a record, a location, classification, schedule. If you like it, tag it with an F4 or right-click send to favorites, and it will show up here. Click on my favorite records. I have a few. Click on my locations. I've got one. Click on my classifications, and I've got one saved. So anything that I probably work with on a regular basis. If I'm if I'm in finance, I might have all the finance related classifications. If I'm in um, HR, I might have all of uh, the staff members listed in my favorite location, something, something like that. The next view is the trays, of course. I have here the recent containers and recent documents, so those are pretty handy. If you, if you wanna work on things or continue working on items that you've touched or created recently, go to your recents, containers or docs. And if you are an organization that's utilizing the tray system, uh, with through actions and procedures or workflow, items will show up in your records due, your in tray, and your records work tray. So again, quick and easy access to anything uh, that might be in one of those trays. Like I said, they've expanded. Here's the view of classifications. Here's the view of spaces, and here's the view of holds. So all of this is completely configurable, as you'll see. <clears throat> Let me just maximize this to get full screen advantage. Uh, and I'm gonna right click somewhere in the white space of the Explorer bar and select settings. So here's the settings dialog, uh, the configuration explorer. Let me just move that so we can see it a little bit better. Now here's where you decide what you want on display in that explorer view. And I think this is fantastic. So as you can see, I have my favorites, my trays, my classification spaces and holds. Well, let's assume that we're not doing physical warehousing anymore and I wanna remove that, but I did move over to the legal department. So I wanna bring over my client and matters and maybe my jurisdictions. So as I configure, and add and remove what I want on display in my Explorer view. It's just easy to do it that way. Once I have them on my uh, item selected side, I can then move them up or down just by using the up and down buttons. But wait, there's more. I could have said that with a little more enthusiasm. Sorry. But wait, there's more. Uh, once you have the item selected, you can then go in and even tweak them a little bit more. So let's take the favorites tab, for example. Here I'm selecting what I want in my favorites. So in this example, maybe I don't need consignments jurisdictions and thesaurus terms because we're not using them on a regular basis. But maybe I want to see schedules. Move that over. I don't like it at the top. I can move it down. So here you can position how you want those items in your favorite subsection. Same with trays. Again, remove or add the trays that you're going to use or frequent. And then finally, this is my best part, my favorite part. If you click on the user's other settings, if you click on the other settings, here's where you can set how many items to, to return. So Organizations that may have hundreds or tens or hundreds or even thousands of classifications or thousands of retention schedules, etc., you can limit how many are on display in the Explorer view. So I've limited it to 10. I'm going to click OK. The changes get updated right away. 
Uh, but let's take classifications, which is usually something that there's more than 10 of. Click on that. You're going to see the first 10 displayed and then the double click to get more. Once you do that, you'll get the rest of the classic classification list. So I think that's fantastic. Keeps it neat, keeps it neat, compact, and it's all about underwhelming the user. We don't want to overwhelm them with thousands of classifications. Let's give them the first 10 at a time and if they want more. And of course, you're going to encourage them to add them to their favorites so they don't have to go and browse the whole classification structure each time. So that's what I like about the Explorer view. Uh, other than that, everything's the same. If I click on it, I go to my records. Here's my record on display in the list pane and the metadata is display in the view pane. That hasn't changed. Everything, uh, everything behaves the same. Now, one of the big advantages is the with the Explorer view is they have now transferred that to the web client. So again, in the web client video, you'll see the overview of the web client. Let me open it here now. And when you go to the home page, this is what you're presented with. It's a whole new redesigned layout of the home page with that favorites navigational panel. Everything I've just did will be reflected. Now notice right now it has the old settings. I'm just going to refresh my browser page. It's going to go back, get the information, and now it's going to be updated with those changes I made in the desktop. So that's important. Anything you do in the desktop will be translated or will be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Anything you do in the in the desktop client will happen in the web client and vice versa. So wherever you configure the tool, the settings will be synchronized between the two clients. Uh, this is great for any of your staff who work in both both the uh, clients, desktop or web client, and even better for those who might be considering a migration to all web client use only. Um, if you can establish that familiarity in the desktop client now, as you migrate people into it, uh, it'll be a very low um, adoption rate. Uh, no, very fast adoption, very easy adoption. You know what I'm talking about. It'll just be a lot easier for them to adjust to the web client. Um, let's take a look at that again. Favorites. There's my favorite records that are on display. Um, I'm going to do a full detail on the web client in the other video, but I do want to point out that if I click on my classifications, it does give me the same option. Click here to get more. If I click on that, it'll bring back all 10 or more than 10, all of the classifications at that point. At that point. So what I do really like about the Explorer view is it's completely custom configurable. Just like we saw the desktop client, click on the gear. Here's that Explorer configured dialog box. Uh, it's webized, if that's a word. Um, but here you can add and remove. So if I don't want to see holds anymore and I don't want jurisdictions anymore, I can take those off on my favorites. I don't want to have schedules anymore uh, for my trays. I don't need to see work tray, make all of these changes, click OK. It immediately gets updated on the web client and now you can you can navigate as you would. Um, again, if I go back here and OK, let me just close this off and then I'll go back to it. And if I click on the Explore bar, you see those changes that I did in the web client are now immediately reflected in the desktop client. So all in all, the Explorer is a great update, great change, uh, great modernization of both the web client and super useful in the desktop client. So that's all we have for this video. If you liked it, throw down a click on that thumbs up. Uh, if you want to be notified of future videos, please subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you want videos done, feel free to contact me via the comments or an email, and we'll try to get some videos that talk about, talk about topics that are of interest to you. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.